So today we're going to be talking about default applications on Linux, specifically through XDG, and why this is just not as simple as the topic as it should be. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I said that this isn't as easy as a topic as it should be. So what I mean by this is, so if you're not a Linux user, you probably don't understand why a default application is just so difficult on this operating system. So there are two main ways to do default applications, at least on most systems. There are probably other little ways, but these are the two main ones. So you have programs that respect XDG open and programs that do whatever they feel like doing. So most GUI file managers, most things that come with a desktop environment will respect XDG open. So you can set your defaults in that and everything will work fine. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But then you have other programs like, say for example, Ranger I believe has its own way of deciding which files to open up with what programs. And because of this, changing that, you then have to go change it in XDG if you want to change it for your other applications. Then you also have to change it for Ranger, and then you have to change it for everything else that uses its own custom config file. Now, when I use custom configs for setting my default applications, I try to rely on XDG open 99% of the time. The only times I don't are, for example, with LF, I will open up JSON files within NVim instead of opening them up in, I think I've got them in my browser just because I have nice browser tools or within some other program that I can't really edit in. So say if I wanted to use like a JSON visualizer, I prefer to open up my JSON files within my terminal text editor when I'm using a terminal file manager, but that's just me. And there might be other things that pop up like that, like say for example, HTML files. But right now I'm not really working with any HTML, so I don't have that in my custom opener thing. So I would recommend trying to keep everything within XDG open because otherwise you're going to have an absolute maintenance nightmare. XDG open is already a maintenance nightmare itself or the entire XDG sort of thing is a maintenance nightmare. And that's why there are projects that are created to replace it. I might mention those a bit later in the video, but right now, all I'm going to say is that you want to try to consolidate everything into XDG open when you're trying to do file opening because otherwise you're just gonna run into problems because if you wanna change stuff, you have to change it in like a million different places and you will run into mistakes somewhere. So let's just jump into what we're actually doing today before we go way too off tangent. So let's say we want to do something like change the default file opener for, I don't know, PNG files, that works, we'll do that. So here's a PNG right here. So right now I'm opening them up in SXIV, but let's say we want to change it from that to FEF, for example. So how would we go about doing this? So let's just quit out of this. And the program we're going to be running is called xdg-mime. You will have it installed. If you don't, then you don't have xdg open installed. So I'm not really sure why you're watching this video, but let's just kill the compositor so it's a bit easy to see. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to just make sure that it's actually SXIV that we're working with right now, because maybe it is fair, maybe there's just some weird problem. If there's a weird problem, we have much bigger problems, but let's just try this. So we want to query the default for image slash PNG. So if you want to check the type, I'll show you that in a second, but PNG files, I'll just say right now are image slash PNG. So as we can see, it's opening up with sxiv.desktop. So let's just go into that actual pictures folder and try something different now. So if we want to find out what the actual MIME type for that file that we used just before was, we can run, instead of running default, we can run file type. I can't actually do ZSH autocomplete with this, which is a little annoying. And then I don't know, I think it was this one. Doesn't matter, they're all PNG files that all have the same actual MIME type. So if we run that, we can see that it's actually an image slash PNG. So we will correct about the actual type. So what do we do from here? The next step is actually really, really easy. So now that we know what this actual type is, now we need to actually find out what sort of 
programs we can actually open up with. So the files that you're going to be using are .desktop files. So the best way to locate these, you could go look through your file system for them, but I would recommend just using some sort of search program. So I'm just going to use locate. You could use fuzzy finder. You could use anything else. I'm just going to use locate for today just because that's what a lot of people just have installed on their system. So we said we wanted to use fair. So if we search for fet.desktop, so the dash i option just means search it case insensitively. And we can see that we have in our user slash share slash applications, we have a fet.desktop. So now we can actually use that to set the different type for this image slash PNG. So now if we go xdg, if I can spell it correctly, xdg dash mime, and then we set the default. This time we don't have to write query. And then we're setting the default from SXIV to FET. All we have to write here is FET.desktop. And then what MIME type we want to actually set that on. So we're setting it on image slash PNG. So we run that and no output is a good thing. If there was output, that would be bad. So now we can actually just check that actual type again. And if we run that, now we can see that it's opening up with FET. So if I bring up LF again, and if I run this on this PNG right now, it should open up in FET. And as you can see, FET doesn't scale the image properly. It just zooms in as much as possible for whatever reason. I don't know why. That's part of the reason I switched to SXIV. But we zoom out and as we can see, this is FET. We have like this transparent background thingy. We know it's a different program. So obviously you don't have to use something like LF or a GUI file manager to actually test this. So there's another way you can do this. You can actually run XDG open from your terminal. You, if you use your terminal all the time, you probably already know that, but maybe you don't. So what we can do is run the xdg-open command and then just pass in the file. So we changed it for this PNG file here. We run that and as we can see, it'll open up in fair. So let's just change that back to show you that it's actually working. So we know that it's already an image slash PNG, so we don't need to do that. What we're going to do here instead is we're just going to jump straight to this command. So this xdg-mime default. And instead of running FET in here, we are going to change it to SXIV or whatever other image file viewer you have. I'm not really sure what else you would have. These are the only two that I really care about. So I run that. And now if we run that again, this xdg open command, we'll see now this will open up within SXIV. So there's another way you can actually go about setting this. You don't have to use xdg mime, but you might run into some issues at some point I would recommend doing everything through XDG Mime, but if for whatever reason you want to do this manually, then there is another way. So within your .config folder, you will probably have a file called mimeapps.list. If you don't, then I think you can just create it yourself. Oh, I, that's weird. I must have set a specific type for a file at some point. I didn't even realize you could do that. That shouldn't actually be there. So. This is a fairly simple file. There's nothing too confusing about this. What we're going to want to do in here is there is three sections in here. So we have this added associations, removed associations, and default applications. So if you're working straight from the terminal or you're working from a terminal file manager, you're probably not going to really care about removed associations. So removed associations will remove programs from the list of like open with. So if we go into like uh, PC Man FM, and in here we have a list of different programs we can open stuff up with. So if we were to say remove Brave, for example, from application slash JSON, it wouldn't appear in this list. It might also not appear in the open with list either. It'll depend entirely on your actual file manager. Once again, this is a lot of this is very dependent on what you're actually using and how much they actually respect the XDG spec. So if something doesn't work as expected, then a lot of the time you may not have actually done anything wrong. It might just be the fact that your program doesn't respect XDG, but let's just assume that they do. So the section that we're going to care about isn't this added association. So you might want to use this for something like torrents, but the part we're going to care about is the default application. So you probably won't have these sections, just make them yourself. If you've used XDG Mime, I believe it actually edits this file in particular. So it'll probably be there if you've used it before. So if you're following along with the video, then yeah. 
But let's say we want to change this PNG to FET again. So instead of doing it through XDG MIME, if we change in here, and then we'll have to quit out of LF just to make sure it doesn't try to reuse the same thing. We go to this PNG here, and as we can see, it's now opening up with FE. And if we go back to my configs, go back to the MIME apps dot list, and change this back to SXIV. Quit that again just to make sure it doesn't try to cache anything. Reopen that, and there we go. Now it's in SXIV instead of FE. So it's actually very simple to change this as long as your programs are actually respecting the XDG spec. This is, as I've said a bunch of times in this video, this is entirely dependent on how much your programs care. Typically, GUI programs will do stuff properly. A lot of the time, terminal programs will either require you to write your own sort of script for it, or will just do whatever they feel like doing, like Ranger, for example. I think also VIFM does its own imaginary thing and breaks everything, but that might just be for file previews. I think it's, no, it, I think it actually is for file opening as well, which is just annoying. Just, just use XDG open, please. It makes everything so much easier. But I did mention there are projects to replace XDG open or the XDG sort of stuff. So let's just have a look at those. So here are some examples on the Arch Wiki. So You've got your basic one through XDG MIME, which is what we've been using this entire time. So it's actually a part of XDG utils if you, for whatever reason, don't have it installed. But as I said, you've got some other things that just do whatever they feel like doing. This theme is actually awful now that I'm having a better look at it. How do I disable this? Turn that off. That's better. Okay, so you've got XDG open, then you've got MIME open, Mimeo. These are actually like alternatives to run. But then you've just got Ranger, which is just like, I'm just going to do whatever I feel like doing which is annoying because I don't like that. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to switch to any of these because you have a problem with XDG open, then feel free to do that. I haven't tried any out, so don't send me questions about them. I have no idea how to answer them. But I don't know, they might be good. This seems a little easier to work with than XDG MIME, but maybe it's way worse. I have literally no idea. So... I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this video. If you want to change them in your GUI program, it's just going to depend entirely on what you're doing. Like PC Man FM, if I want to change this, the default application for this example.json here, I can just go into like open with, then go internet, uh, then go brave, set default application. And there we go. Now it's changed the default application. So I'm not going to like go into any more like GUI applications. It's very easy to change them in those. I thought I would just explain it through the terminal method. So I think that's pretty much everything to this video now. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this where I'm just doing these sorts of tutorials, let me know and I'll be happy to do them. Also, if you want to see those, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I have got all of my social links and all of my support links as well as my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's where you go for that. And I think that's pretty much everything for me now. So I'm out.